Hi guys, welcome back to the channel again. Today what we're going to go over is some cool items, pieces of equipment that Jeeps have in them to help their soldiers with various problems that they might encounter in the field and uh, just really day-to-day -day use. So I've made a list of items, we're going to go over them one at a time to so show you what I've got in my Jeep. Most of the weird little items I have managed to get hold of, even if they're some of them are only reproductions. So not an entirely extensive list, but not a bad one. So let's mass start. Right guys, so let's get rid of the obvious one first. Pioneer tools. These can be a little bit controversial. So basically on the driver's side of a Jeep, you've got two indents in the body, along with some footman loops and brackets to hold a shovel and an axe. There's uh, multiple types of shovels that will fit in these. Mine is a original. The axe is an original, but that's a 50s one, not a wartime one. Uh, that does the job though. When I got the Jeep that came with the axe, though I have given it an overhaul, the shovel was given to me by a friend, because the one I had w came with it was a British one, which was no good to me, so we did an exchange. So here are my Pioneer tools. And then you can see the strap system that held them in place. Little bracket there that holds the axe up. Then you've got the bracket the handle goes through. And then the shovel just fits into that bit there and scratches all the side of your body. Now you often see it displays and stuff uh, that the shovels had to have a canvas cover on them to protect the paint. Now I'm almost certain that that never was a thing in the war. I'm pretty sure that's a just a made up thing that people have on because they don't want to scratch the paint. Well, that doesn't bother me, so uh, mine does not have one because they're in I'm pretty certain they're incorrect. If you have a wartime photo of a shovel with a cover on, please do send it to me. Now, a quick note on the paint. I've seen a lot of people getting into fights about, on the internet about the painting of Pioneer tools. Now, in some manuals I've seen that there was multiple different ways they had them. Some of them were completely bare wood, and no paint on them at all, just bare metal. Some of them were painted like this, with black metal and wooden, just bare wood. Other ones had these bits of metal painted green with bare wood, and then you have ones which were the wood and everything was painted green. Uh, that's the examples I know of. Uh, there's also, I've seen one, like a shovel with bare wood, a green handle, but um, a bare metal end. So there's a lot of different debate. There is not one solid, this is right, that is wrong. That's just a load of rubbish. I went with black with mine because I thought that looked nice contrasted against the Jeep. I don't like them when they're just painted the same color as the Jeep because even if they were green, chances of them being the same shade or OD as the vehicle is basically zero. Um, the other contention that people have is, in reality, a lot of the Jeeps didn't have Pioneer tools because they weren't issued with them. Well, that is true. But my, I have them, and they're cool, so they have it on there. Plus, as I've mentioned before, mine's meant to be part of a second armoured division. If anyone's vehicles are going to be equipped, it's going to be an armoured division. Uh, and that's really, well, it's basically all I've got to say about that, as far as Gump would say. The next little item that the Jeeps have fitted to them, a jerry can, as they are known. Now, originally the Jeeps didn't have the bracket for these, uh, after a while, that was made a special order item, so you could, so the units could order the bracket to put a jerry can on the back of their jeeps, and then it became a factory default after that. So they all came with them. Now, as you can see, I've got a nice American can here. Mine's not wartime; that's post-war, but I've done it in a late war sort of dark OD. That's got the little octane tab on it there, which is a little detail. It took me ages to find a reproduction one of them, and I've also stenciled the side of it, which, sorry, I'm struggling to see with how bright it is. Should be able to see my stencil there. So, um, that's my jerry can. And also, what mine has fitted as well, because I have the bustle rack, I have a water jerry can. So, this is a wartime one. 44, I believe. Yeah, that's what it says on the top there. So, this is just the same as a normal jerry can, basically, but it's made to hold water, and as you can see, it has a different top end completely. You see inside there's a bit skank, I wouldn't want to use it. Now, I got this ridiculously cheap, that was just at a local auction. 
I uh, think that cost me about two pound, which drives a lot of people mental. Um, that was in pretty good nick, but that was marked up 1947, the date on the Markins was, and that was marked up to be a benzene container, um, which is different, but it was, you know, it, it, it was the wrong colour and everything for, for wartime, so, and it was getting pretty rusty in a lot of places. So I did sand it down and uh, give it a fresh coat of green, which some people might not agree with, but, you know, that is what it is. Um, and at some point I may even put a water stencil on it. So, anyway, fuel can and the water, water can. So the next item I want to show you is the decontaminator. So this is a reproduction decontaminator. Originals are very hard to come by and extremely expensive. So basically this is almost like an old, similar to an old fashioned fire extinguisher in its style. But that was for decontaminating after chemical attacks, gas attacks, that sort of thing. Uh, and they were positioned in different places. Sometimes you see them on the driver's side wing, or fender, depending on where you come from. Sometimes you see them on the passenger side wing, and one of the default places for them was where mine is, under the seat. I've put mine under the seat because my tub actually had the original holes for the bracket under the seat, so I thought naturally that's where it needs to go. So, decontaminate here. And to my knowledge, these were never actually needed in the end. If you uh, know otherwise, please let me know in the comment section. Now, obviously as you can see here, my Jeep has no roof on it. And it never has a roof on it. Because I like driving open top, and if the weather's so bad I need a roof, I probably don't want to be out in the Jeep. But even when I do get a downpour, I still have no roof on it. But for when the soldiers are in the field and they needed their roof rhythm but not on them there is a place where that was actually meant to be so if I flip the passenger seat up here you see underneath it is a nice brand new Jeep roof a summer roof there was more than one type there was a winter one and a summer one uh, most of the time you just see the summer ones obviously so basically underneath the passenger seat there's four footman loops which are these little items here just in case people didn't know what a footman loop was, with a pair of um, straps and you fold your, your um, roof up and you strap it under your seat. It's a little awkward to do but once it's on it's on. Uh, so I have uh, recently bought a new roof which just looks nicer than the one I had and that has been instantly folded up and put under the seat probably to never come off. So that's the next little cool feature, storage for the roof underneath the passenger seat. The next feature we're going to have a look at, the rifle rack. Now this is a universal rifle rack, that's not specific to Jeeps, but the Jeep windscreens have brackets on it to fit them obviously in certain positions. Now again, these can go multiple different ways. This is the default way, this seems to be the most common, is to have it like that. I've seen them spun around the other way, though I find that a bit awkward. I've also seen lots of photos of them upside down. Uh, having it upside down obviously has obvious advantages to make it easier to get out. And basically what you do, you get the stock of the rifle and that goes up here where my hand is, that pushes that bit up, that goes in there and it gets pushed down tight and then the barrel comes forwards and you've got a little lever here so the barrel of the rifle would be under here and clamped in position and when you want to get out you just push that forwards and pull the rifle out this way. Now there's some photos of really odd placements of these in Jeeps You've got them like that, you've also got them so they're like bolted on by that side and sticking out, which is very strange, I don't get that at all. Um, and you've also seen photos of them welded onto wings, just sticking up. And I've seen photos of them like bodged into the back hair. So that's the default position from, for them, but there's other ways to do it. So again, that's one of them things where someone says, well they wouldn't have had it like that. Well, there's lots of strange photos of things they did do, so take that with a pinch of salt. So there's your rifle rack. Next up, we're going to come to the rear seat, because the rear seat has a few quirky little things about it. For a start, the cushion folds up like that, and you've got an almost like little indented compartment of the seat that you can use to store stuff. And what I've got in there is my side half doors. So not all Jeeps had these. Some did, some didn't. But um, essentially what they were for is you put them on the sides of your Jeep 
and they help to just keep you a bit warmer. Stop you, it's got so much wind coming in to and hitting your legs. And they fit to these little poppers. These are the correct wartime style. Some of the reproductions use more modern styles because they're better, but they aren't correct. So I went for the wartime style. And the poppers they use are quite unique, if I can get some footage in here for you. So you see, you push it and that kind of gets them two little arms. Hopefully you can see that well. And I don't know of any other piece of equipment that uses them poppers. And that's probably for a good reason, they're absolutely useless. They're really weak, they fall off easily. I mean the reproductions maybe are not as good as the originals, but they changed them for a reason pretty soon. And it's because they're weak and bad, but correct. So another little feature for you. Folding rear seat with a cushion that comes forwards and some canvas half doors just to keep your legs a bit warm. So a couple of you might have noticed whilst I was waffling on about seats that there was something else behind the seat. So what you've got down here, see that bar there? That is a hand crank rod. So if you are trying to use your Jeep and the starter motor fails, you've got some sort of electronic issue or that's broken or whatever, you can pull that crank out of there and you take it around to the front of the Jeep. And you see in the bumper here, next to my star, there's a hole. Now that crank rod goes through that hole. If I squeeze my camera underneath, and give you a shout there. You can see on the front of the engine there, the crank goes into that and you give it a hand start. Now I have done that several times because a couple of years ago we had some electrical problems and I couldn't use my starter motor for a while. It turns out it wasn't the starter motor that was the problem, it was the solenoid that powered it, which is weirdly enough a modern piece of my Jeep. Anyway, the point is, I had to do some hand cranking. There is a way to do it that's safer than others, because if you do it wrong, you could break your hand quite easily, you could even kill yourself if you're really unlucky. I'm not doing a hand cranking video because that's just, no. <laughs> but but it's a laugh. The engines can kick back very hard, so just be careful if you have a hand cranking. That's another little feature, is the hand crank kept behind the back seat. Right guys, there's one more thing, or well, actually there's two more things I need to show you to do with this rear seat, because the rear seat is where they hide a lot of the quirky little items on the Jeep. So I'll put the uh, camera down and I'm going to show you this. If you give your seat a good yank, like so, you see it folds up, and if I can uh, adjust my camera, you can see a couple of items. The first one being, there's a bracket on the bottom of the seat that holds a tyre pump. So if you get a flat tyre, you need a little bit of air, that's where you keep your pump. That's out of the way, it's not going to hurt anyone. My pump's only a reproduction, I haven't come across original yet, especially one for a good price. So that's one feature. And then, stored underneath, you'll see this piece of canvas that's folded up. Now what that is, is a canvas cover that fits over the windscreen. You're probably going to get told that you shouldn't call it a windscreen, that should be called a windshield, but whatever. So that's a canvas bag essentially that goes over the windscreen, because uh, in combat situations you don't want your windscreen, or windshield or whatever, you don't want that up so that all of the lights reflecting off the glass that can be given you away your position. So what they did is they folded the screen down, which is another little feature that I'll show you in a minute, and they put one of these covers over it so that there was no reflection from the grass. And um, some of them, a lot of them, I think probably most of them, had uh, allied star marking on them, just like what the, the bonnets or hoods, for you Americans, had on so that they could be identified by friendly vehicles, hopefully. So there's a double feature for you. So Jeep seat, lots of stuff hidden in there. Right guys, come around to the other side here as we are talking about the screen cover, we better take a look at the screen. And there's a couple of weird things about screens on Jeeps, they're quite cool. Firstly, ignore that mirror. They wouldn't have had that. That's a modification that looks sort of correct that has been put in because I use this on a modern road and it has to be safe. Well, as safe as a Jeep can be. Anyway, back on track, you've got a couple of options. On the sides here, you'll see these. And what they're for, there's one on each side. See it over there. You loosen these up and the windscreen will lift out of the screen and you can have it coming up 
like this so that you get air coming out from the screen under the screen and stuff I don't really understand why they bothered too much about that because um, the, the, my thought pattern is the whole screen folds down so why would you bother messing about with just lifting the glass up you'd, uh, you'd just fold the screen down so I don't really understand that as a feature but that is a thing and a lot of the American vehicles had it so you've got a fold out screen and then the more common thing that you see is the screen folded down so the screen the screen's frame is basically just held on with these two brackets there and it just sits back you have a rubber weather shield that sits on down there and on each side you got one of them brackets there so if I swap my hands over try not to get too shaky you just clip them up and then you go around to the other side of your Jeep where you've got another one give that a clip up, get them stuck up like that then you get your hand wipers and you push them into the centre you can do it without doing that but they're meant to be in the centre, that's where they line up properly and then the entire screen comes down and down here you have the hooks that hold your hood or bonnet down and you've got another pair above, so one on each side and they come round and they hook into this little note about my Jeep in particular, that's in the wrong place, that should be there obviously something weird happened here at some point in the past, that's been bodged up I'll correct that one day so them hooks come down and hold that and that keeps this pulled down onto the bonnet or the hood, whatever makes you happy and if you have that canvas screen on, the canvas screen has a little hole for these that stick out so you can still hold it down so then you can imagine with the canvas screen on you've got a very low profile vehicle for a start and you won't be getting no reflection out of the glass so there you go, folding jeep windscreen right, so one of the other common additions you have on a jeep they were factory standard but there is more than one type of them so you have a fire extinguisher now as you can see this is underneath the driver's side that's on a simple little bracket similar to the decontaminator but there's some issues with that now I don't know if you can really tell in the video but there's not a lot of space down there and that is exactly where your foot water goes so you often get your foot caught now later on they changed that and you'll see a lot of the jeeps have the fire extinguisher on the wing there that's a much better idea than having it down there you are, I'm always catching my leg on it that really does take up a lot of space I mean I'm six foot two I'm bigger than what most people would have been driving these anyway so that's awkward enough as it is but you've got your fire extinguisher so if I can get my camera down and that's very tight so I'm not sure how good a footage I can get you you can see it's very similar to decontaminator it's got a sticker on there but that's an OD green, not, not blue like the decontaminator sorry I can't get the gimbal and everything in there, it's just not enough room so that again is a reproduction, there are various different types and that's something that you could argue with with people on the internet all day uh, so I'm not even going to get involved in it, I've got a reproduction one and that does just fine down there so you have your fire extinguisher now guys we're going to come under the uh, hood for a little while, or the bonnet I'll just say both and then no one can whinge now, what you can see down there, you see that little bottle with a lot of pipette, a lot of giant pipette? That is an oil dropper, so that's a bottle full of engine oil, and that's for lubrication. So there's a little bracket down there that that's clipped into, just behind the carburetor next to the horn there. And you have a lubrication order for a, all the military vehicles, and that is so you can do things like, uh, you see the carburetor here, you've got the linkages. If I get the camera in, hopefully you can see that. The light's a bit funny because it's so bright. But yeah, all the linkages and stuff like that are meant to be uh, lubricated regularly. And that's the bottle you'd use for it. So you'd go around all the little like nuts and bolts and links in the engine, your distributor and stuff like that. You've got a chart to refer to. And you just use that little bottle there. That's an original, which is quite cool because they're often missing. Because they apparently used to get nicked a lot. Uh, that's one of the, what I think is really quirky little features just because of where it's hidden up. So you've got your little oil and bottle for your lubrication. 
Now, whilst we're under here, we're going to look at the underside of my bonnet or hood. Now, you'll see some photos of a big plate on there, like a bigger than A4 with a sheet of paper in it. And that sheet of paper would be the lubrication order that shows you all of the grease points and oil and points and all that sort of stuff. That did not come into effect until later on. The age of my Jeep, that wouldn't be correct to have one of them on, so mine does not have it and it never has had it. Another thing you often see is down this side here would be a bracket with a grease gun in it. And by grease gun, I don't mean a submachine gun, I mean a tool grease gun um, for using on the grease nipples when you're doing your lubrications. Again, that is a later thing. I think it came to effect the same time as when the lubrication charts under the bonnet go home standard. I'm not sure, but I think that's the case. Either way, older Jeeps, like one of my age, didn't have that. They had a smaller little grease gun that fitted into one of the toolboxes. And as we mentioned in toolboxes, I thought I'd just show them to you. So at the back, behind each of the wheels, you can see you've got this little lid here. There's a button on the side, you push it, and then you've got a little storage space. Now on the other side of it, I have my little toolbox inside there with some bits and pieces. This one, I this side I just use to hold some canvas bits for various different jobs. You'd normally have, um, there is a list of what should be in each one. Um, so like you'd have your grease gun and your jack on this side. But whilst we're here, I'll also show you another one of the funny little canvas items. So these are headlight covers. So like I was saying about the screen cover down there, it's to stop the glass reflection. This is the same thing. These go over your headlights and you strap, you just tie them up. And that's again to stop headlight reflection. So that's just a nifty little bit for you. And I just keep them in my little toolbox, which is just for the canvas bits. Right guys, that's all there is for today. This has probably become a lot longer than I thought it would. But there's a little video just showing you some of the funny little details of the uh, World War II Willys MB Jeep. Or for GPW, if that's the way you're inclined to own. So hopefully you enjoyed that, and I'll see you next time.